Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. This is the sequel to A Memory Called Empire, which I did a review of last summer as part of my Hugo Awards reading project, and that is the book that actually ended up winning last year's Hugo Award for Best Novel. I really enjoyed A Memory Called Empire, and I reread it just in January in preparation for A Desolation Called Peace, and I would say the second time I read A Memory Called Empire, I enjoyed it even more. So after that, I was super excited for A Desolation Called Peace to come out. This is actually the first book that I've received as an ARC from NetGalley. Before I even received the ARC, I had actually already pre-ordered the book. So obviously this is a book that I was very much looking forward to reading when it came out, and I'm just happy that I got to read it a little bit early. I'm planning to make this review completely spoiler-free. For most of it, it won't even have spoilers for A Memory Called Empire. And then like I usually do, I'll warn you when I'm going to have some spoilers for A Memory Called Empire, so those of you who haven't read either book can stop watching, but other than that it will be spoiler free. So just as a little bit of a review, A Memory Called Empire is a story about an ambassador whose predecessor has died mysteriously. She is from a small independent space station which is trying to remain independent and not conquered by the Texacolan Empire, which is the dominant empire. The way Arkady Martin writes about this empire, it's kind of a blend of sort of Roman Byzantine culture and also some Aztec influences. So it really is a culture that feels very foreign and alien, but also kind of familiar. A Memory Called Empire is actually kind of a dense book. What I appreciated about it when I reread it was how beautiful the writing actually is. And I feel like I really enjoyed A Desolation Called Peace as well, but I kind of have the feeling that when I get a chance to reread it, I'll probably end up enjoying it even more the second time, just the way I did with A Memory Called Empire. So compared to A Memory Called Empire, I don't want to give any spoilers, but A Desolation Called Peace is a story with a much larger scope. It involves a bit of a first contact story. It has more points of view and more characters. Some of the themes are very similar to A Memory Called Empire, but I definitely feel like Arkady Martin took on an even sort of broader scope in the story. But a lot of the things that were really great about the writing are still really great about the writing. It does feel like a bit less of the tightly plotted story, but there's still a ton to really appreciate in this book, and I'm looking forward to actually rereading it at some point. I read it in one sitting because I was really excited to know what happened, and I really enjoyed it, but I think it's definitely a book that you could read more slowly and kind of savor. I'm actually not sure if this series is supposed to be complete as a duology or not. I actually think A Memory Called Empire reads very well as a standalone, even though it does end with a certain amount of buildup for A Desolation Called Peace. And I think you could also read those first two together as a duology. If the series ended with A Desolation Called Peace, that would be totally fine, but I do very much hope that Arkady Martin might write a little bit more about this world and these characters because there are just so many interesting ideas in there and so much I'm really enjoying and I want to keep seeing how things evolve. She raises a lot of complex issues and character arcs that aren't necessarily things that have a neat answer. So it feels very real that way. It makes you want to keep reading to find out what will happen. Some of the themes that I thought were so interesting in A Memory Called Empire were kind of exploring what it's like to be this character who is an ambassador to a foreign culture, but it's a foreign culture that she really loves and admires, but she also knows it's a culture that would love to completely subsume and destroy her culture. So she has these really conflicting feelings towards that. And it's just an interesting exploration of that, like the role of culture and empire and what it's like to be an outsider. And also dealing with two cultures that have very different concepts of the sense of self. I feel like A Desolation Called Peace takes that even further because we have points of view from more characters that are from different backgrounds and from different places within the empire. And then we also have, you know, this first contact story, which just expands the definition of otherness beyond even um, what it means to be human to what the concept of self could be. I don't want to say any more than that, but I think it does very much build upon some of the ideas in the first book, even though it feels like a pretty different kind of story. But like a memory called Empire, a desolation called Peace is quite political. There's a lot of exploration of how these different branches of the government and the military are basically set up against each other. 
and the emperor has a certain amount of power, but also it's but also a lot of that power is about the emperor manipulating these different factions into, you know, doing what the emperor wants. That felt very Roman to me, the way that these military leaders are able to amass power and their own followings and the issues that might or might not present to an empire. I really enjoyed all the new points of view in this book. I'll talk about more of those in my spoiler section in a couple of minutes, but it was really interesting seeing Arkady Martin write some pretty different characters because the first book was all from one point of view except for the interludes. So just seeing that point of view continue but also seeing these other characters, different ages, different walks of life, I enjoyed that a lot. I also felt like I also felt a lot more connected to the characters in general in this book than I did in the first book. I have this feeling with Arkady Martin's writing that she is an amazing writer of characters that I just don't connect to emotionally. I think it's kind of a little bit of that classic science fiction feeling of while the characters might be well written, they almost feel like they represent ideas sometimes more than actual characters, but yet they do also feel like complex, believable people. So I don't know why I don't have a deep emotional connection to her characters. I just feel like I don't, but I felt more of one in A Desolation Called Peace than A Memory Called Empire. I saw one review saying that this book is much more ambitious than the first one and that because of that it's not as perfect. I feel like I could definitely agree with that point of view. I feel like it is a book that just takes on a lot, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different different concepts and it's just not all wrapped up maybe as tightly as the first book. It doesn't have quite the satisfaction of unraveling a mystery that you kind of get in A Memory Called Empire, but there's also just a lot that's really great in this book. So I really, really enjoyed it. In terms of who I think won't enjoy this book, this is still kind of a dense writing style and while it's plot driven, it's just not the lightest most fun read. It does take a little bit of work to get through, overall in a good way. Like I didn't find it myself to be any kind of slog, but even so I think that some people may just not enjoy the writing style and I think that's totally fine. It's also, it's not a very scientific science fiction, but her books are very philosophical. So depending on how much that interests you, you may or may not connect with this series. I also think the alienness of the different cultures, I mean even the human cultures that are represented can be a little bit hard to get into because it doesn't totally explain everything straight out in either book. You kind of figure out as you go along. It's not the most confusing or immersive science fiction book that I've read. It's kind of medium on that scale, but it definitely does throw you a little bit into the deep end. And also the made up vocabulary has a very Aztec flavor, which means that in English the words can be a little bit hard to read and remember. Again, that's something that doesn't really bother me, but I think some people might find it a little bit more challenging or off-putting. So I find A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace to be very rewarding books once you get into them, but they're definitely books that feel like you have to work for it a little bit. They're not books that you just fall in love with because they're so much fun. Now I'll just talk about a couple of things that I couldn't really talk about without giving spoilers for A Memory Called Empire. This is mostly going to be about the points of view in the book because I really enjoyed them, but I would end up spoiling A Memory Called Empire if I said too much about them first. So we still have Mahit's point of view, which overall I enjoyed and I felt more connected to her in this book probably even than A Memory Called Empire because it was like coming back to a familiar character, but also getting more other points of view. I felt like I was able to sort of see who she was even more as well. She's still dealing with a lot of the same stuff as where we left off in book one. So there are still issues with the Imago with Iskander and she doesn't really know where she fits in and she sort of gets drawn a little bit too much more now into issues and politics back on Lizelle Station, which could be very dangerous for her. So definitely kind of an out of the frying pan into the fire situation when she's starting off this book. We also have a point of view from Three Seagrass, who was Mahit's basically assistant in the first book. And I really loved this point of view. It might have even been my favorite because what I thought was so great about it and what Arkady Martin did so well with this point of view was that I really felt like being inside this character's perspective, she really came off as exactly the same character as when you read about her from Mahit's perspective. And I feel like that's kind of a hard thing for an author to do. I feel like a lot of times you feel like this distance, you know, between the character when you're in their head and when you're not. But here I just felt like the writing was just super consistent with who she was as a character. 
And I could really just see that her behavior, you know, who she was as a person was coming across both in the way she thought and acted, and then the way that other characters were perceiving her. We also get a point of view from a new character, Nine Hibiscus, who is a military commander. I really liked her storyline. I felt like actually compared to all of the characters, I felt like she came across the least clearly as a person. You hear about her from other people and get more of a sense for who she is that way, but I found her her point of view just a little less defined, but I still really liked her as a character, and I liked some of the side characters around her, and she plays a really, really important role in this book, so it was definitely one of the major points of view in this story. Then the last point of view that we get is Eight Antidote, who is the kid who was the clone of the previous emperor. So now he's basically the imperial heir, and I thought Arcady Martinez did such a good job writing from the point of view of this kid who is still a child, but is way too worldly wise for his years because he's just seen so much politics and bad stuff and is just kind of jaded in his existence, but is also still a child and still has child reactions to things as well. I thought it was a really, really interesting point of view and it was one of my favorite points of view to read in the book. One more thing that I will say that kind of builds on how A Memory Called Empire ended, the romance aspect of this book is more significant than it was in A Memory Called Empire. I didn't feel like it was super significant to the plot in either book. It's something that kind of happened more towards the end of A Memory Called Empire and it plays a more important role in A Desolation Called Peace, but I feel like it's still not what I would call a central part of the book, but it just felt more important to the characters and their motivations in this book than it did in A Memory Called Empire. So like I mentioned before, I really hope that Arkady Martin will write more books in this setting because I would love to see, you know, what continues to happen with these characters. But I thought Desolation Called Peace was overall a really satisfying read. I'm curious to see if I end up liking it even more when I reread it at some point because that's really how I felt with A Memory Called Empire. I just connected to the book so much more the second time and I know I read Desolation Called Peace kind of fast, but those are my thoughts based on that first reading anyway. I enjoyed getting to read the book as an e-arc and I'm looking forward to getting my copy when the book comes out tomorrow.